Melly Sews and I design blank slate patterns and today we're going to learn how to install a zipper fly, a functioning zipper fly. I've got my materials in front of me here. These are the two front pieces from my clean slate pants pattern. They're cut to the short sleeve, which is an option included in the pattern. I have my zipper, but if you don't have a tiny little zipper like this, I am going to show you how to shorten a longer zipper. And I have my zipper foot. Now, I actually have two different zipper feet. I'm going to show you how to install both. I'm only going to sew with one of them. The two types of zipper feet, we have the snap-on zipper foot that very commonly is included with any sewing machine that you purchase. And then I have one that can also be called a piping foot sometimes. And I actually prefer that one for sewing zippers because this little indentation here allows more room for the foot to pass over the um, zipper pull without getting caught up in it. Also, sometimes these piping feet have a more narrow toe than the snap-on zipper feet. But either one will work. So, let's start sewing. The first thing that I'm going to need to do is finish the raw edges on my um, fabric here because I'm not going to have a chance to finish these after I sew the fly in. So I want them finished before. Now if you have a serger, then it's really easy to just go serge down these edges. Make sure not to cut into the um, under the fly extension too much with your serger blade. In fact, you may want to turn it off to do this. But if you don't have a serger, I'm going to show you how you can still finish those edges with just a regular zigzag. This is called a faux overlock stitch and all you have to do is set your machine to zigzag. You're going to want a pretty short stitch length and you're going to want basically the widest zigzag that your machine is capable of doing. And then all you do is put your fabric in the machine. You want to hand put your needle down and you want to make sure that when it's going over to the right that it is just missing the edge of your fabric, barely. And then you're going to sew right along the edge. So the left side of the needle will enter your fabric and then the right side will come just over the edge of your fabric and that will overlock and keep those raw edges and threads from fraying right along the edge of your fabric. going to fray. You see it did get a little ruffly looking because I'm using denim with some stretch in it for these shorts. And um, I need to do the same thing to the edges of the fly shield. So I'm just going to fold the fly shield wrong sides together and then I'm going to faux overlock down one short edge and one long edge. The other short edge you can leave it unfinished if you want. It's going to end up getting enclosed inside the waistband so it doesn't really matter if you finish it now. ready. The raw edges that I need to finish are finished. And the next thing I'm going to do is place my shorts right sides together and I am going to stitch along the center front crotch seam. Before I sew this seam, I want to change my machine. Obviously I want to take it off with a zigzag stitch. But I also want to have a basting stitch until I get to the bottom of that fly extension. After that, I'm going to use a regular stitch length. So I'm setting my machine to the longest stitch length it'll do for a basting stitch because I will end up removing these stitches later. I'm just going to baste right along. 
When I hit to the point that is at the bottom of those um, fly extensions, I'm going to switch to a normal stitch length and I'm going to back stitch a couple stitches before continuing on and then finishing the rest of this center crotch seam with a normal stitch length. So now that I've got that sewn, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to snip just from the bottom of the fly extension over to the seam. It's a tiny little snip, but it will allow the fly extensions to unfold independently, and that's what you need to be able to insert this zipper. So I'm actually only going to unfold the top fly extension. If you'd like, you can press this seam, but usually just finger pressing it works fine. And I'm now going to be putting in the zipper. Now, I already have a zipper that's the right length. If you don't have a zipper that long, you can also just take a regular length of zipper and lay it down on your fly extension there. And you're going to line up the top of the zipper tape with the raw edge of the top of your fabric. And then you're just gonna mark where the bottom of the fly extension ends. And then I'm going to need to sew a zipper stock there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my machine back to a zigzag. I'm going to do pretty much the shortest zigzag stitch length it will let me do. I'm at 0.5, that's going to work here. And I'm going to do a really wide zigzag stitch again. So I'm going with 7 millimeter wide stitch and right above my mark I'm going to put the needle, I still have the regular foot on my machine. I'm going to put the needle down so that it lands to one side or the other of the zipper coils. And then I'm just going to sew. And then what you can see is, I cut my extra thread here, but I've now got a little bump on my zipper and my zipper cannot unzip past that thread bump that I have made. So then all I would need to do is chop off my zipper right below the bump and I could then continue with my fly installation. All right, so I'm gonna take my zipper. I am going to put it just to the right of the seam that I sewed. I want the top edges of the zipper tape lining up with the raw edges of my fabric. And then I'm going to pull out my secret zipper weapon. I use this for all zippers, not just zippers, um, not just fly zippers. Transparent tape. Now don't let my fancy tape holder fool you. This is a regular old transparent tape and I'm just going to take a couple pieces and I'm going to use them to stick my zipper right onto my pants where I want it to stay. So I've got my zipper taped into place now and I am going to change my zipper foot. Since I have my press on foot on, all I need to do is um, push the lever to release it and then I am going to snap my new foot right in and make sure that it is on the side that um, so that the needle will be closest to the zipper teeth. Okay, since I am going to use my piping foot instead of my zipper foot, I need to get a screwdriver and I'm going to unscrew the low shank or the snap-on shank from my machine and then I'm just going to hook in this other foot and I'm going to screw it on instead. So now I'm ready to sew on my zipper. So I'm going to sew for this pass right along the edge of my zipper. And that's because I'm going to be folding this and sewing again on the next step. Stop when you reach the bottom of your fly extension. And you can remove the tape now. You'll notice it tears off in two pieces, one on each side of the stitching. So now I'm going to fold my zipper flipped up to the other side, so my zipper is right side up now. And at the same time, I'm going to be sewing my um, fly shield to the back of the zipper. So I'm going to place that right under. I'm going to add a couple of pins to hold this part in place, and I'll remove them before I sew over them. And so I'm sandwiching my zipper right in between the fly shield and the fly extension that I sewed. So I move my needle over and I 
adjust my zipper foot. And then I'm going to sew right next to the teeth of the zipper. Okay, so now you can see that I have my pants and the zipper is sandwiched in between a fly shield and that fly extension which is now folded flat to the inside. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold the fly extension back out of the way and I'm going to pin it so that it doesn't get in the way of the next step. I'm going to turn my pants over so that the zipper is face down and I'm going to be sewing right along the edge of the zipper here to sew it to the other fly extension. If I lay my pants flat with the wrong side up, I have my two fly extensions flat, the zipper is sewn in between them, and then there's a fly shield that covers the back of them. So what I want to do last is I'm going to stitch the um, stitching line that's going to secure this fly flat fly extension down, and it's that stitching line you see on the outside of the pants. It's a little bit decorative too as well as functional. I want to make sure when I stitch it that I only catch the bottom of my fly shield, not the top, or I won't be able to unzip these pants. So again, I'm going to pin my fly shield out of the way, but I'm doing it at an angle this time so that I will catch the bottom of the fly shield when in my stitching line. Once again, this is a step that you want to have um, marked onto the front of your pants from your pattern. There should have been a fly stitching line that you can mark on there. So, um, go sew right along your mark now. Now one thing that you want to be careful of, particularly if you used a metal zipper like I did, is to make sure that you are going super slow and that you are using a longer stitch so that you don't end up breaking your needle on the metal teeth of your zipper or on that metal zipper stop at the end. So I actually like to hand, hand crank through that part and then once I know I'm safely past it, I'm good with continuing sewing by machine. So, now I've got my fly stitching line all stitched out. I'm checking on the back and I made sure that I've only gotten the bottom of the um, fly shield and not the top. If I had, I would need to seam rip that, but I didn't. So now all I have to do is take my seam ripper and I'm going to rip the center portion of the basting stitches I did in the earlier step out. So once you finish ripping the seam, pulling out the extra threads, Sit there and just accompany yourself with some zipper noises if you've got a functioning zipper fly.